Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Figma figure, number 205, Honda Futayo from Horizon on the middle of nowhere. Now this is not something I'm familiar with, but we're using this figure for a custom, so I figured I would review it before I turned it into something else. And it's actually a figure that I've seen around, and I've actually wanted to use it for a custom for a while, just because it looks like a really cool figure, or it looked like one. And now I know that it actually is pretty cool. She comes with a bunch of stuff. So we're going to set the figure aside just for a minute so that I can show you everything she comes with, which is actually a pretty impressive spread. So first of all, she comes with the Figma baggie, which if you don't keep your packaging, though I recommend you should, you can keep all of your accessories in that. So that's nice. She comes with the Figma display stage, standard two parts. We have the um, articulated upright piece and then the stage part at the bottom. And we have the extra piece that can go on the tip of the display stage just to help you with your posing so you can use that to peg it in and of course she has a hole on her back to receive that peg so that's pretty cool she has two fist hands obviously those come on the figure then we have a tree of eight more hands so we have the two jazz hands two kind of open hands two narrow gripping hands two narrow gripping hands that are angled, and then we have one less narrow gripping hand. So that's nine extra hands plus the two original. For those of you that aren't the best at math, that's 11 hands in total. We have two alternate faces plus the standard ones. We have the standard face right here, which you can see is done incredibly well. The eyes on this figure are really impressive, really well done. So that's the standard face, kind of a plain look. Then we have a I don't know, whatever you want to call this. I guess it's kind of like smiling. I don't know. Shy, embarrassed, I don't know what it is, but that's what it is. And then we have an angry face, which is cool too. And I will pose this figure at the end so you can see the different faces in action. We have an alternate hair piece, and you'll see that it's basically the same hair piece. So that'll just swap on there. But the reason this is here is so that you can add this piece to it, which... Maybe that's a thing from, I don't even know if it's a show or just a manga, but you add this to it and then she's got this kind of Tron like light up thingy that goes around her head or in front of her head. So that's what that is, just a piece of clear plastic with a little bit of paint or ink or whatever it is on there. It's pretty cool. Nicely done. And um, she has this piece here. Both of her shin pads come off. So you can pop that off. You can only do one at a time though because you only have one alternate piece. And what that's for, again, like I said, I'm not sure what it's actually for fiction-wise, but as far as for the figure, you put that piece on there and it gives you this kind of readout, it looks like, in front of her knee. Whatever that's for, I don't know. You guys can tell me if you know better than I do because I certainly don't. You can do that on either side. It doesn't matter. They are both interchangeable. But... So you saw the one of these that goes on her knee, but we actually get three other ones of these, and we get three of these things right here, which are just little bases for them, and you put them together, and it ends up, there we go, I'll just throw it on the floor, it ends up looking like this. So clear acrylic again with the printed out stuff on there, and then a little display thing for it, and you can put them on either way. If, they're, if these are actually a particular thing, then... You can tell me, but I think they're probably just little display stages for the readouts. So that's kind of cool. We have another translucent piece, which is this right here. It looks like a little bit of a windmill type thing. And what that's actually for is the spear. So she has a spear. Pretty good sized spear. It's actually, this is the small version of it. It's 8 inches long, so it's pretty big. Nicely detailed. You can see on there. And what you want to do now is pop the tip of it off. Be very careful though. It's kind of fragile. Make sure you pull straight out and then push it straight in. You don't want to go at an angle or you could break it. And then you have this clear translucent thingy that goes with the tip of it. I'm guessing it's a video game type of storyline and these are kind of like her move readouts, but I really don't know. Kind of like a Tron type thing maybe. So that's the 8 inch spear. And then we also have pieces that I've already put together a little bit to make the spear even longer. So you want to just pop this apart here. Again, try to do it as straight as possible so you don't bend anything and break it. And then you can put this together. And this is incredibly long. It's almost too long for me to show. That's 12 inches right there and another 3.5, so 15.5 inches. It's a really long spear, so maybe it extends or something in the show. Like I said, I don't really know. 
And then I think I've covered everything except for this, which is her last accessory, which is a sort of blade weapon. It looks kind of like a... You know, I'm not sure what this kind is actually called. It's almost like a... Oh, now I can't even think of the word, so I don't know. Whatever. It's a sword type thing. It's nice and silver with a little bit of red on there and a purple handle. And then we have a nice sheath for it to go in. So it's got a nice array of accessories for sure, this figure. Let's look at the actual figure itself. We've gotten through all of the cool stuff it comes with. Well, technically, I guess these two pieces up here are accessories. They don't come on her in the package. I'm not sure why. I don't believe you're supposed to ever leave them off, actually, so that's a little odd. Maybe they just didn't want to break them. So those can go on like that, and then you can also put them down if you're not putting her in kind of like a, a fight pose. You can just fold those down or up, and you can see what I'm talking about right here. So those are kind of up, those are up, those are down, okay? So you can do that. Now, the figure stands about five and three quarter inches tall so she's got some pretty good size to her for a female figma figure which is pretty good i like that i think she'll be pretty well in scale with most uh five and a half to six inch collections i mean it's not going to be exact for both of course but i think it'll be usable at least so that's cool and she's got a really nice shelf appeal to her with the mix of blues and whites it looks really cool and then we have this glossy paint for her legs which is a nice contrast to the rest of the paint, which isn't glossy except for the blue parts. So it's just a really nice looking figure, and we have some really nice paint applications with those white stripes on the arm and on the sides there, and then just more detail work around the abdomen. So it's really cool looking. I think it's a really well-designed character, and it makes for a really nice figure. Um, some people complain that her arms are too short and her legs are too long, but I think it looks pretty well... Uh, based on the images I've seen online, so I th well in scale with the images I've seen online, so I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it's definitely got an anime feel to it, so I think that's probably what they were going for. Now as far as articulation goes, we have articulated hair, standard Figma joint for the hair, so you can technically rotate it at the top and at the bottom. You can pose that pretty much however you want to, spin it around if you don't like the way it looks. Uh, you're going to have to force it a little bit because the socket is ovular instead of round, but you can still do that, no problem. And as far as the head articulation, standard Figma joint, you can kind of see in there. It's basically the same joint that's right here. So you can lean it this way, or spin it at the top and bottom. If you want to rotate it around, you can get the head to lean to the side. Well, let's see, I can probably just pop it off and show you. So yeah, it's just another hinge joint. So if you rotate it around, you can lean it to the side instead of just forward and back. The neck doesn't appear to be articulated on this figure. I don't see any joints in there. So that's, uh, some people might be bothered by that. It doesn't really bother me. I'm going to pop these off so I don't keep knocking them off. Uh, you don't really need neck articulation if you have decent head articulation, and this figure does. If I can get it back on, that would be much better than not. There we go. Hair was in the way. So as far as articulation goes, though, uh, the hair gets in the way a little bit when you lean it back. When you lean it forward, you really don't have too much getting in the way. You, you might be a little bit limited here because she has that kind of collar going around there, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, this side hair is really soft. I can show you on here even better. They're glued in pieces. They're not the same material as the main piece. So they will not break unless you really pull on them or twist them or something. And even then it would be more of a tear. So you can pose that no problem. Shoulders. We have a ball peg that goes into the body that moves around like this, and then we just have the standard ball hinge for the shoulder. And then a bicep swivel built in there, so you can move it around that way. And then the elbows are a standard hinge again, but you can actually rotate there also, so you get pretty good posability options. Then the wrist is a swivel since it's a peg. It's really stiff right now because I just took it out of the package, but it's a swivel because they just peg in and a hinge. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. It just pegs in so it'll swivel on that and then you can see the hinge right there. Now for the upper, or not even upper torso, on this figure it's not quite like other Figmas in that it only has the one bit of torso articulation and that appears to be a double ball peg. I haven't popped it out yet to check because I don't want to risk breaking it before I actually look at to, look into it more carefully, but it moves around like a double ball peg. So you can lean from side to side, forward, back, pretty good range of motion, full swivel. So you should be okay posing it. I don't think it really loses too much from not having that lower torso articulation. This skirt piece is technically hinged, just like the elbows. Same exact joint as the elbows. Maybe a little bit 
Well, it looks like the same size even too. So you can see the hinge here that'll let these flaps go up and down. It technically lets them rotate at the bottom and where it connects, but the, just the sculpt is pretty limiting. So all you're really gonna get is this for the rotation, which is gonna just bring them out to the side a little bit, but you're mostly just gonna get the flap like that. So that's okay, I wish it was done a little bit better to allow for better range of motion, but it's not horrible. For the hips, we have a ball peg, you can see that in there, and then a, the socket. So the socket is what moves the leg around on the ball peg, and then we also have a thigh rotation that the socket pegs down into the thigh in here, so the thigh rotates around that. It's a little bit limited, it's not horrible by any means, but it could be a little bit better. I might try to open that up a little bit for the custom I'm working on. We'll see. Uh, I haven't seen a Figma before that had this particular setup. It doesn't feel like it's on the standard ball peg that normally goes up into the torso, so I'm gonna have to look at that. Uh, it might be a little bit limiting, but as you can see, it's not, it's not gonna be too problematic. You should be able to pose the figure just fine. The knee is a single hinge, just like the elbows. Uh, it doesn't look bad from the front at all, and it's not too bulbous sticking out from the back, so that's okay by me. And then when you pose it, of course they don't have the gloss paint on it, but it doesn't look too bad. It's a pretty nice design, and you can get pretty good range of motion out of it, so I'm okay with that. And then the ankle, same type of joint again. We have the hinge, and then it'll swivel in the ankle, and it'll swivel in the foot, and if you want to bring it around, you can give her an ankle rocker to allow for some posability. So that's a pretty well-articulated figure. My biggest gripe is that this piece back here, it's hard plastic like the rest of it, but it's not articulated at all. So that's going to get in the way, probably, of some posing. It's a little bit disappointing, but overall, it's a really well-done figure. I'm excited to turn it into something. Uh, I kind of want to buy one just for myself because it's a cool figure, but I don't know anything about it. So I don't know if I'm going to end up doing that, but I do recommend it. There's a little bit of paint issue here and there, a little bit of bleeding, but nothing at all that's worth worrying about. So there you go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and post some photos here at the end so you can see what it looks like in action, so to speak, and uh, that'll be a wrap. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming, oh, that's a mouthful, figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.